Hello everybody, I want to start now with the next phase of not only power analysis but also in a way how can we actually use this power we did measure here. So here in this video I will be focusing on capacitive load, high resistive load and I will show you a couple of scenarios and do an analysis example would be we have our air coil bipolar tesla coil we have the loads here and how to connect these loads in various combinations and measure then the power output so that will be the subject of the video today the next videos then we go and we're going to migrate or we're going to change our load to a transformer try to transform down that load and see what we can take it or how we can take it from here so from a power transformer point of view, we use the bipolar Tesla coil and I have connected on each side a 4 nanofarad capacitor which will be used, I have it on here and I have it also on that side that goes down here in to that load here on that side I measure voltage coming in, I measure also current here on the input side and then we go on the output side, so the first scenario we just connect it to two spheres so I have an open connection on the end side for both sides and again I measure then here current I measure then here voltage output we are starting with the same level, uh, level of 100 volt put it 100 volt here and we tuning in the system and the brightness is increasing quite a lot we are aligning the wave for both sides like that so brightness is very very high now but it draws a lot of current wow that's a lot go to the highest value so what we can see here in a, in a first instance let me explain so we have about um, 34 watt input we have here on the input side we have on channel 2 that's how much power goes in it's measured on a first measurement coming in from the coil that is measured on the output side going over to the cylinder channel 1 current um, current 4 is measured on the output side what goes to the sphere and channel 3 is measured what goes in so we have quite a lot going on here already and another thing which is very very good to, um, to see is the lines if I go to the cursors well, it freeze now so waveform at that measurement and to give you an idea about how power or let's say potential and current is aligned so we are reading on the left hand side that's our zero markation and then we see the waveforms so the yellow line here is my current I measure on the output side and point 0.4 here is the voltage com coming into um, the system so if you look at the waveform we see that voltage is leading and current is lagging so if we take that um, first value so we should really ideally be here let's go with cursor 1 over here to that point so from the zero definition point it would be 30 degree so if I take the 30 degree here and go to the absolute side 60.48 degrees that's the difference would be 28 so it's 30 degree only lagging that means that the current is very much aligned to the voltage that means we have a much higher power output because we don't have 90 degree lagging we have only 30 degree lagging which is good news ideally it would be if both are at the same level but that under normal circumstances is almost impossible to achieve but there are systems where you can do that here we are gaining 60 percent or 60, 60 degree if you want so the current is much closer aligned 
So that's good first test. I want to show you that the power propagation is here um, delayed um, to um, a fraction and comes in stages. So when I switch on the power, like that, have a look on the light emission and also on the oscilloscope. Now, now it's completely aligned. So that is and the value. So it takes a couple of fractions a second. Like there is a specific time frame uh, actually for the propagation until it settles down. That's quite interesting. So this scenario would represent the so-called one-wire power transmission system from Tesla, where you have only one wire going out, and you have a specific setup on the receiving side, which would then trans uh, transform the energy into usable energy. So we're going to do the same things in, in, the, in the next parts of the video. Now let's do another combination. We continue with connecting directly to ground. Now we are connecting the load directly to ground. You can see I'm um, taking the measurement here for current and for voltage on the ground. So this is a scenario we live in the world today where every power is cycled to the ground or earth or neutral as you call it and this crown I'm using here is my RF crown you can use uh, have a look at my old videos you will see it's in my garden that is not the house crown it's not connecting through any kind of crowning through my house it's going outside in the garden so and let's see how that is panning out here on my power propagation measurement Let's start with the same value we have stopped before. I energize. Let's have a look. Okay, that is um, almost as bright as it was before. The current is half of the value we have at the moment. Here, what I can see here is, is it looks like almost nothing coming out here. The brightness is quite good. Let me tune that in now to a um, value where I get highest brightness as reference. I think that's the highest value I have at the moment. And uh, these are the waveforms I have at the moment. They, have, they, they don't look very, very nice. There's a lot of stuff going on that would need to be um, aligned probably in order to use it, but it's a it's a very chaotic um, power propagation form I see here, and um, for a use for a power system, it's not very very helpful. So we need to align that to power form as we had it before. So that's what we need to focus on. Let's move on to the next test. So in the next scenario we're going to use a spark gap. Here as you can see the spark gap has a very very small gap because our voltage is not very high so we need to have a small gap. Let's have a look and then I connecting both outputs to the inbound side and then the other side on the output and measures and current propagation and power, uh, power propagation here as well. Now I have tuned the system mapping over to the sparking position. You can see that there's a lot of going on here on the current side where we have the sparks. So we need to have a look at, at our voltage chart here and they're nicely aligned here actually on the side. Yes, we are on a current higher. We are about 15 watt or 10 watt higher than we had before. But what you can read out here is a tremendous amount of, of power and very important. So that's the input side. You see around 2 up to 3 amp in. But on the output side you see here around 8 amp. And the same accounts here. 
well, slightly different. On the input side we have 1.6 kilovolt, on the output side 1.5 kilovolt wire the ground. So that's quite amazing. So this one is yielding a lot of energy. However, it has a huge impact on radio transmission. So it's up to 1.2 gigahertz. It's a flat high level of disturbance. So this kind of frequency here from the spark gap is scrambling the whole network here that means you will not get any reception when this system is running unshielded like that you will disturb any kind of network so that's important however that's quite interesting to note here let's move on to the next test so in the last test for this session I will use the asymmetrical capacitor I did build for the Harold Aspen experiment and will connect this one to my measured load side and I don't connect the other one because if I connect them together they're going to cycle to each other and they will not go to the output side so I, I use only one here the one outside so that source is the one I measure we do the same measurement we have the current on the output side and also the voltage and then let's see um, how that pans out so now starting having um, the capacitor, the asymmetrical capacitor connected, I see a lot of going on. First of all, the so waveform is a little bit better aligned. Let me go a little bit to the waveforms here to have a look what we're going to see here. So we see interesting phenomena. As you can see here, three wave trains going through this capacitor. When I align them, here you go. Look at that. And also note that the current on the input side, yeah, so we have 25, 26 watt here, and I have much more power output here. So interesting to see as well is that I have on, okay, so voltage is slightly lower than on the input side, but the current on the output side is higher again than the input side. Now let's focus a little bit further. So here it says it's very stronger, but uh, you can see the brightness is changing as well. It's go it goes a little bit down. I'm not sure if it's so good visible on the camera. Let's go up here. Now they come together. Hundred sixty eight. Put that together. Wow, that's here is goes very, very strong at hundred eighty. Let me go further out. Not so good visible. The values are, is, is moving down here as a load, but the load is picking up much more, much more power on the brightness. Again, this is three waves. Set down. So value here is changing to a much lower value. And then it's gone. It's not there anymore. Let's go back. Again, we see this nice curve. So it goes up, down. So the current is a bit straight. So rises up and down that is the output voltage propagation it goes up and down let's go further down that will be then equalized as you see when I go down that's the waveform is more defined like this you have a rising current here on the output side, so that is here. And at the highest point you have value as well. So if I take the cursor over here again, have a look here, let's say here in the middle, it's almost, it is aligned. 
it's exactly aligned to the voltage here with this capacitor so that is very very good news that means in this combination we have the highest power usage possible so that would be the ideal combination that the current and the voltage is in the same line so this concludes my first part of um, systems to investigate for the power propagation in my next part I will use um, I will build transformers and will step the power down I will harvest the power will charge the power and maybe if I have some time I go then to the um, will indicate it in the next stage if not I will have a third part and the third part will then use the so-called self um, energizing system self-looping system thank you